don't know why you joined, but I'm very glad you did. Because, like I said at the beginning, and I don't, uh, obviously I don't say it enough, but I, I would not be here if it wasn't for you. Welcome to the Set Apart Podcast. Today is episode three. Today we have my best friend, my business partner, and somebody that I care a lot about. And we are going to talk about our friendship, our relationship, and how um, Foz joined, and how we have essentially built this company together. And we might have not started this company uh, together from inception, but you uh, came a few months after, and I wouldn't be here w without you. So I'm, I'm really happy that we actually have a very uh, sophisticated way of having this conversation and documenting it. I'm excited as, I'm excited as well. Cool. You know, I was thinking about ways to start this, and um, this is actually the second time that we've had this episode. We, we filmed it the first time, and I felt that, and we felt, and uh, your girlfriend felt, and my wife felt, that we really didn't do our relationship justice. So hopefully we can do it this time around. I didn't know you were gonna let everybody know. Yeah, this is this is the, I call it the honest podcast. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> take two. But I think the best way to start this podcast is by really thanking you for everything that you have done for me, because for many reasons, but mostly because you have always allowed me to be me. You've always allowed me to to lead in the capacity that I wanted to lead. You've always made me better. And in a time where I, I really, really struggled, you completed me in a way where like, the only way that I can imagine another type of person that has done that is my wife. And at a time where the company was very, very young, we were like five, six months in, you know, we had very little structural financially. We had very little assistance, you know, um, and anything other than just me, uh, Iram, and Isabella. And something I, I talk about in the first episode is I had asked a lot of people um, to, to partner with me, and I never had asked you. And um, I wish I would have asked you because I, I don't know if you would have said yes, but um, you're somebody that I never thought that I shouldn't, you know, you were kind of like not the underdog, but somebody that I never thought I would, I would partner with. And... I really, really uh, can't imagine having a better partner than than you. Well, I appreciate it. Oh, uh, I think it's uh, probably the first time you thank me, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I know that's why I wrote <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so yeah, it's the first time you ever thank me. Um, from my perspective, um, when you asked me to join you, I wasn't really sure. Uh, if I should or I shouldn't. Um, I was coming from another industry. I didn't know anything about construction. Um, I knew that you were very goal oriented and you wanted to achieve a lot. But throughout our, you know, our lives growing up, you were never the most structured person, you know. Um, so I, I, you know, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wanted to own my own business. But I was afraid of, you know, taking that risk of, uh, you know, dropping everything I had studied uh, like my mentality was hey you studied uh, you did your CPA you are working at an accounting firm and you're gonna leave accounting to go into construction so you know I was always questioning you know if I wanted to join or not and I think you know it was just God made it happen you know because you told me hey if you bring any jobs that you you know you bring any jobs that you, you, you make 50 percent of them and, and I was like, all right, I started, you know, trying to bring jobs and it happened so quickly. It was kind of like if God put it, you know, in front of us and kind of made it happen. It was like the most effortless thing I ever did. It was like so organic. And thinking back now, how, how hard it is to land a job, like, you know, essentially you landed like eight jobs. Yeah, we, we landed six jobs really quick, but, you know, it was crazy to me because I started like writing that day that I that I would go in the car with you. I think it was sometime in September, September, I don't know, 
sometime, I think it was like September 16th or something, we took a ride. 20, you know, I, of, I, of 2016. Correct. I took a ride along with you when we started. So how did that, how did that ride along even start? Because I, no, I, I think you had told me, hey, you know, we, we, I think, I think we were already kind of going to the clients that I had kind of reached out to. And I think we were already kind of driving to those potential projects to try to estimate them. And I was kind of like on the fence of joining or not. And then you were like, hey, come ride or come ride with me on a day that you're not at work, work at work. So I had like a PTO day or I had a holiday and I rode with you. And literally I, I saw the way that you were operating the financial side of the business. How did you think I was operating the construction side of the business? At that point, I didn't I never even looked into it. I, I you weren't was, even thinking I was, about that. I was no, I was so naive to what is running a business and what is operations that I didn't even look at. Hey, is he running a job correctly? I, I knew so little about construction that I didn't say. Would you say that that kind of it's kind of still like almost the same way? I, obviously, it's yeah. You've, you've always ran jobs the same way, but your but I didn't is, know anything. But your focus I, is almost still like again. You've you're very very involved in the jobs, you know. Still, but like you saying that I can like you kind of like. That's what that's what I that's what I had always prayed for and wanted from you was to be able to like for me not to worry about those type of things, you know? Yeah. And that's hard to find in somebody, you know? Yeah. I I knew that there was I knew that there was a risk going into it. I knew that there was a risk going into it like just by seeing the way in which you were managing, you know, the money. But I was always wanting to have my own business and be an entrepreneur. So I literally, we literally landed jobs together so quickly and so organically, like I mentioned before, it happened so fast and so quick, almost like if God wanted it to happen. Like quickly, yeah. And I said, there's a need for this. You know, there's a massive need. We had our conversations, there was massive need for good GCs. And I said, damn, there's there's a need for this. And he, he I know that there's profit to be made. I saw our estimates. I didn't know how to estimate the job, but... I knew that there was money to be made if we controlled the money. And I saw the way that you were managing the money. So I said, hey, it's easy to land work. It's a profitable business. Hey, like, let's take the chance. You know, I could always go back to accounting if I ever need to. I could always go back to tax preparation. And and I said, hey, let's jump. But in all reality, did I look at, you know, how we were running the business? Did I look? I, I knew that we weren't really running a business. We were trying to start a, almost start a business, you know? Yeah. We, there weren't really operations in place. It was like, figure it out as you go. Yeah, I think at the beginning, no, I told, I can't. Uh, listen, I, we were not running a business. We, we were, me and Isabella and Idam at that point, all we were trying to do was just pay for our expenses, try to pay for our rent, try to pay for our gas. Like, like literally, we're just, Living on ends meet, you know. Oh, I remember the first time you called me, the first time you called me, you said, "Hey, you were you were kind of you were tight on cash." Uh huh. Well, you were tight on cash, but you were you were very stressed out, um, and you were very worried, and you were saying, "I don't know if I have enough money to pay my personal rent." And I remember asking you, "I'm like, but but where are you where are you paying that out of?" And you're like, "Man, I just pay it. I just pay it." And I was like, "That was my first sign of like, there's no." money control you know there's great business great leadership on the field great construction but what was happening with like the financial side of that business you know so you join essentially you resign um october of 2016 so that's about six or seven months after i had started uh inam which is our first employee which is we're going to talk about his story in episode five of the of the Who's John series, we talk about his startup. He starts in July. I start in April. You start in October. This all happens like super super quickly. What do you remember from those early days? Because here we are in our office, in our podcast. Now, twenty twenty four, but like eight years ago, we were like, we I literally couldn't afford to pay my rent. What do you really remember most about those days? To me, honestly, the reason I ask you is because it was such a blur to me. And then the, it was such a difficult time for me, you know, such a miserable time for me that sometimes, like, I tend to, like, want to forget. But what do you remember from those early days? What I remember most is, what I remember most is I tell you, hey, 
you know, tax season ends October 15th. If we land this last contract... <laughs> and he resigned six days after. Correct. Six, no, no. He, yeah, correct. He already knew. I, I, tax season was over, so he, I didn't even have to give a two-week notice. I gave him a one-week notice. I told him, hey, I'm going to check out everything. I, I, was, I had everything organized. But to not, to not go off tangent, I remember tax season ended October 15th, so I knew I was going to give my resignation. And I said, hey, if I didn't want to leave them high and dry during pause, tax season. Pause. I don't even know that. I don't even know that tax season ends October 15th. Well, well, extensions end October 15th tax deadline. So so I told, I, I didn't want to leave my firm high and dry with my clients. So I uh, I remember that we were, I was going to resign. And I, I finally resigned. And I told you, hey, if we land the sixth contract, you know, then, you know, I'm going to go full time. So we landed the sixth contract. I remember landing that contract. I was in my company's conference. I was in my CPA's conference room having a phone call with you and the client on E6, on a make deal six, okay? We land the job. I resign. And then that first week, you show up at my house at like 5.30 in the morning. And you're like, hey, we're going to start working out of your house, you know? And we created an office in the back of my house. And you open up the first set of construction drawings I had ever seen. And honestly, I was like, what? I had no idea what I was looking at. And I remember you had no type of financial position in, your, in the company. So I remember very, very vividly that first week, I was locked up in that office in my house that me and you were working out of. And every day, all I was trying to do was reconcile all the cash that you had spent um, on the physical j- cash on the job. Yeah. It was just like, Hey, send me all your cash notes. And literally I spent two weeks just reconciling all this cash spending and comparing it to our budgets to try to create some type of cash basis, financial statement for us. Because I knew that if we could, if we, if, if we would, if we could prove and people knew that you were go with construction and then we showed the clients that we were strong financially. Like I knew that the company would be successful, but we had to have some kind of financial position. So I remember that first week saying, first of all, I have no idea what I just got myself into. Cause I saw that set of drawings. You opened it, you're like, Hey, let's start estimating. And I'm like, you were, you literally were showing me how to read a drawing. You, you know, you were showing me how to read a drawing. And I was, all I was trying to do was tie that drawing to money. Hey, how do I read this drawing? What does every single thing relate in cost. terms of money, in terms of cost? And that, that's all I did for two weeks, locked up in that room. And I fi- we finally finished. And then every morning after that, all I remember after that, after those first two weeks, all I remember after that is you showing up at my house every day at 536 in the morning. I, I was never an early bird. I came from the corporate world and I would start work at 9, 930. I used to wake up, drive to work pick up McDonald's every morning and I'll be at work by 9.30. And I started having to be in your truck by 5.36 to to go adventure to something I had no idea what was happening, you know, and just learn. Me either, to be Mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. Because to me it was, um, I had known obviously a lot about construction and and I knew that there was obviously a massive need for construction. But to run a business and build things is two completely different things, you know? And I think that people really underestimate that. Like when people want to start a business, like they realize like your talents can only take you so far. But one of the things that was really difficult because somebody, I start a company, I know construction. I may not know how to start a business, but at least, thank God, I know construction. But you don't know anything about construction at that time. How was that 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 change from accounting? Because you you studied accounting, you worked in accounting, and you, you went from accounting to construction. What did you first think about the construction industry coming out of, you know, everybody like in a suit and tie type of work to then dealing with the people that we deal with and trying to herd cats? No, I immediately, immediately I knew... Um, that the field and running all these subs uh, was definitely not for me. You know, I came, like you just said, you know, I was a lot more used to a more professional environment where people would say they're going to do things and it would actually happen 
where there was like procedures in place, review processes in place. I came from like that corporate operational office world. So when I started seeing these subs and, you know, the workers comp and, and are they showing up and, you know, they're, you know, I, I knew immediately that I was not meant for the field. Um, and nothing at, at your lead, you know, at, at your lead, I just, uh, you know, I had confidence in, in you and what was the construction aspect. You know, I had 100% confidence in you in the instru- in the construction aspect. Never did I really question, is this the right thing to do? Like, literally, I was so money driven. You know, remember, I used to sit in your truck and I would write manual checks out of your truck. Man, I had a checkbook like this big and I was writing manual checks. Like, I literally, what, it, what was construction, I never even second guessed it. I was just learning the whole way. I was like, oh. And really applying what you're best at. Literally, and I, I, and I feel like a lot of people yeah. do that. Like they try to like, they try to apply something, or they try to help. Like even if we help bring in a new employee or whoever it is, but just in life in general, like, like people don't focus on what they're best at. You know, learn as what you can and apply the best thing that you can. Because to me, when we were on these jobs and I had, you know, you were in my truck, like, I already, I always knew that we were going to do good. You know, like when, when we started a company and I talked about it in the first episode, like I never, I knew we were never going to fail. Like failure was never an option. But when you came in, I had like such a peace, you know, and that's like when I really, really hunkered down and I realized, which is the next point we're going to talk about. But I, I knew that not only was I doing this for my boy and somebody that I really, really love and I care about. Honestly, that's pretty much it, you know. Like I, like we were we were driving the car, we were like, we were like the like cowboys, you know. We were we didn't have anything that we have now. We had nothing. We didn't have an office. We were in your house, and we had no employees. We only actually we had one employee. We had one employee, and it was just you with your checkbook. We had a laptop that you'd work, you know, in, the in, car. in your car, and it was just like we were so focused on the construction and really providing a good service and. And honestly, we're just focused on really making money and 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 the relationships, those people that you said that you brought, like that guy called us last week asking for, you know, asking for a price. Like we're also really at the beginning of it, we were already like maintaining and creating these relationships that I was telling Ron at the beginning of, of before you got here that this podcast is like me and you and Isabella and Idam and Jazz Revealing like our gang, you know, like revealing like our posse. Like this is like if I'm gonna go to war, these are the people that are here with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and but ninety percent of the people in the podcast that has been here, they weren't there with me and you. You know, like they didn't know us. Like it's taken is taking you know yeah. a long time. And I want to talk about something that I think that like every entrepreneur and like CEO kind of has is. It's like, I don't know what the, what the technical word is, but it's being lonely, you know, and the loneliness. I don't even want to say at the top because I don't even think we're at the top. That's all, you know, but just the loneliness in the state. Because when I first started the company with Isabel, I felt really, really lonely. Then you came on. Well, then Iram came on and I felt less lonely. But then I started feeling lonely again. Then you came on and I felt less lonely. I felt at peace, like, like we're making moves and then. Then me and you, I felt we're like at a point where like very lonely at a point where we're like unrelatable sometimes. Like we would talk, to, we would go to people's houses or we talk to people like it's hard to explain because me and you have, were so focused that it was sometimes hard to explain what we were going through, even through this podcast, even explaining to people what we were doing it's still impossible to really explain like what we we're really going through, you know? And, yeah. and I felt, I, I felt there's some days that I still feel lonely. I feel that I have no one to really talk to and explain to Cause at the end of the day, I, I, I can, I am a leader to a lot of people as you are a leader to a lot of people. And it's not my job to burden people and to like, you know, people you're, we're in the position we're in, we're in for a reason and we have to uh, lead in, in a certain way. But during those days, they were very lonely. Like, it was just us four, me, Isabella, Iram, and you. And um, 
Can you relate a little bit to, to that? Yeah, I can relate, of course. Um, Thank God. No, I can relate for sure. Um, on my side, uh, you know, I think, I think, yeah, we, we, we did have obviously, you know, very, very difficult moments, you know, but the reality is, the reality is that the reason we're so perfect for each other is because we're, com we're, we're complete opposites, you know, and, um, when things are good, we're going to have our highest of highs together, you know, when things are bad, given that we're so opposite, we're going to have our lows, you know, our very, very lows are going to be together. So I see it as we had those highs and we had those lows because we're opposites, but opposites attract. So we're in a way we were, we were perfect. We were the perfect combination for this. I feel like without what I brought, you know, to the table, I feel like, could you have found somebody? Yes. But I feel like I was the perfect fit. Yeah, I agree. You know, would I be able to have taken this company to the level that it's at without you doing what you do? No, I would have never been able to do that either. Uh, so same, I could say the same thing because. So was I lonely? To go to back to your question, was I lonely? I never felt moments of loneliness. You know, I never felt uh, uh, alone. If anything, I felt you're not. You don't feel alone, like to say even today, like no. I feel. I feel almost sometimes like I want to be more alone. I feel almost like an abundance of people. Like my phone rings all day. Like yeah. I tell you, hey, I'm gonna work from you know home or the keys, you know, on Fridays and Mondays, and my phone doesn't stop blowing up. I'm working the whole day. You know, so I sometimes I feel like I wish my phone wouldn't ring. And and I, I know it's like, oh, that's a client. That's not really your friend, like that type of lonely. But the reality is that there's so much need and attention. There's no time to really, I swear, in, think about like that loneliness feeling. I, I know that I you have my back. I know that people, my close posse, my gang, like you call it, my my posse. I know they have my back. So it's not a question of, hey, bro, if tomorrow I get sick and I'm in the hospital, is anybody going to be there? Like, I have my family. I have my, like, my close people. But when it comes to, like, waking up and making money and grinding, I don't feel lonely. You know, I don't, I, I don't get, like, emotional like that about it. Well, you let, you let, the day that you feel lonely, you let me know. Because mm -hmm. I, um, cause it's not about the, the text messages. It's about sometimes I just, I was talking to somebody that worked at Suffolk yesterday. And I was, I talked to him for like about an hour and I told him, you know, the thing that I miss the most from, from you and from the team that we had is that. I know who it is, but okay. I had like this, I had like, if there's a really, really complex thing or something that I, I'm, I, I can't figure out, I have somebody, you know, and, 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 and John Bell, the reality is that I really, I really don't, you know, like if, if you have a very complex accounting situation or you're trying to do something, you're not going to call me. You know, you, you're completely lonely. You are by yourself. Like, you have to figure it out by yourself. And sometimes, you know, I, I wish that I had that. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. And um, can I can I say something? You can say whatever you want. I. Yes, what, yes. That loneliness that you're referring to of not knowing what's coming. But like mm -hmm. right now, when we, when we leave, or we wake up tomorrow morning and we have the world on us. How many people can you call and really bend to and they say, Bro, I really understand. I, I, I totally get it. How many people do you think you can call? No, no, not many. Two. Exactly. Two, three people, max. Exactly. Okay? That's and, 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 and some of them are blood. Yeah. Uh, and I get that loneliness that you mean. But I feel like we've been at that place where we have no idea how we're going to do it. I think that has to play big, plays a big role. what we're going to do that we at this so point. We were so low. Uh, yeah. That, that now we're point, like, it's like, this isn't really lonely. What, you know, yeah. uh, not to say that we, that we, we have... You know, we, we got to stay humble and we have to understand that the no, same way that the same saying. way that we got to where we are, to, we can we can be taken down. You know, we brought to so much stuff that that at this point, it's like, hey, it's something else. Yeah, it's just something else. Let's figure it out. Like yeah, there's yeah. a solution. If you really put your pride yeah, and yeah. you really put your passion into it, there's always a solution. Yeah, you yeah. know, in a way, obviously, death is another story. There's no or, taxes. or, or health or sickness, but and taxes. Uh, in taxes, you always got to pay. No, but even in taxes, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's always an option. There's always solutions.
Who do you think that me and you, specifically you, have mentored and guide? Do you feel that, because that's big, I'm talking about somebody that I, I, I used to work with, that I used to talk to, and like, do you, how do you feel that, you, that you're doing in terms of mentoring people here in our company? But it's, maybe it's not even here in our company, because I, I, I feel like I do ha I mentor a lot of people, and I help a lot of people, and I'm trying to do the best I can to bring people with us. Do you who you don't have to mention names, but do you feel that that you're at a point where you're bringing people with you, and that you're you're cre that you are like the, their leader in a sense, not a leader, but that you're making an impact in them in their life, and you're helping them. Um, no, not really. I don't feel that way. Do I think that you know in the company? Do you think? Do I think in the company that yeah, I lead people. And I, in a way, meant like m not mentor them. I don't give them like life advice, but I train, you know, my my team, my people that are working under me, and I I guide them. Um, but I don't think I'm really uh, mentoring them. You, think you should, though. You know, uh, I think I try to lead by example. You know, when when my when my team thinks, if my team ever doubts hey is he on it right now does he know what's happening like that i won't let that happen you know no. i won't let like my team knows that er, i'm on everything that's happening no, i don't think that i don't think no i don't and think I by example you. You but know? i just think it's important that you realize like it's not about that job sometimes you know and it's not because people go through like a lot of things and i just i just want you to just Cause you get so like you get so laser focused in things sometimes that you like you don't know the difference between the tree and the forest, and I think it's really important that you realize that that people go through things around here. No, no, I, trust me, I'm going through it too. But I've always and and, and they and, look up to you, you know, and, and you have a a massive amount of power and 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 resources that you can really change someone's life. And I go through a lot of things too, but why don't people? Realize that. Well, that's why I asked you two sec two questions ago but about why don't, why the don't, loneliness. But why don't people realize that? Everybody has, you know, those, everybody has things happening in their life. You know? Why don't people, you know, realize it? Why? Because for me, honestly, I, I'm gonna for me, I've always separated business and, and like personal experiences and personal things. But when I don't. I, I don't. I, I know, and, and that's why we're so good, you, you know. It's not to say that I'm not passionate. Your passion comes off immediately, you know. I'm very, hey, this is what it costs. This is what it is. This is how we do it. This is how we don't do it. Once we establish that and everybody understands their role in this mission, in this goal, okay. Okay, yes. Is there time to talk about personal things? Yes. I don't ever lead people in a way that hinders their ability to go through a life experience. I don't know. Like creating an obstacle for them. I'm not creating an obstacle for no, them. I agree. But am I there like every day talking to them? Hey, what are you going but through? But I'm, I'm not being their counselor. If they want to talk to me, hey, great. What I try to do is I try to lead by example. I've I don't think they want a counselor. I, I think that something people just want is a friend, bro. And I and and I, it leads me to my next point because again we're completely we're like complete opposite people. Me and my wife are complete opposite people. Me and Jazz are complete opposite people. And even me and like Ron are complete opposite people. I you know, opposites a hundred percent do attract. Your girlfriend, Camila. I feel that like what we we're talking about, like, you know, like a whole thing about in terms of you can't talk to somebody or you can't influence somebody or you can't help somebody like because you're saying oh I work you know have a work life and I have a personal life I feel like you pour all of that other like love into like her you know well, Camila so we were talking earlier about the people that you can talk to like I Camila I think maybe six months after we joined together maybe a year after we joined together I think Camila was at our second year anniversary so i was talking to her you know maybe six months so maybe a year after we got together i got with camila so she's been you know through this company for six years with me yeah and like we talked about we've had ups and downs not me and her 
Well, yeah, me, and, me and her too. Me and her us, too. Us but four. Me and her too. But the company yeah. has had ups and downs, and I, she would hear it. You know, she was my. She's a great listener. You know, and she's the sweetest thing in the world. And she would just listen to me. And opposites, she's not a big talker. She's a big listener, yeah. and she's very smart, bro. She remembers everything. She remembers everything. And I don't remember a lot because I have so much on my mind. So I would literally go home and just spill the beans on her, spill everything, and just and did that help a lot? on her. Oh, my God, did that help? She would just listen. And at the end, she wouldn't say much, but she was listening, and she would just say, hey, you know, like, she would just give me, like, a little... A little word of advice. She wouldn't like go into depth. She's not like the huge talker and the huge motivator. She would just give me the right. Her two cents. Her two correct cents. Bro. And those two cents kept the machine just kind of running. Yeah. You know, but I would, you know, we had tough times where I was just so stressed and so alone. And I was just spilling things on her. And she's trying to figure her life too. She was young. I was 27. She was 21. And imagine a 27 year old running a business, throwing all of these. Like she was just a list. She was just listening to me, and it was somebody that I could talk to. No, it's incredible. She's um. She was twenty one at the time. Imagine being twenty one. You're working, and you have this twenty seven year old, and throwing all these crazy, you know. Just and she's still with you. Yeah, <laughs> she's still with me. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, That's, you would have never thought, right? But the, I feel the same way sometimes about Isabella because, um, like, sometimes they don't know what they signed up for, you know. But they love mm -hmm. us so much, you know, mm -hmm. like they. Just like ride or die, like it's. I can't really explain yeah. another way other than ride or die, and I feel like I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at without Isabella, and I. I don't think that you'd be um, anywhere without Chinita. Oh yeah, so. no, for sure. The support that she gave me from the beginning, I was living with her and her mom at her mom's house, you know, for a year, you know, literally mm -hmm. in an efficient, like in an efficiency. So you're living in efficiency. Living to, we're living and together, I'm, and I'm living in someone's living room, and I feel like and we were grinding. I feel literally. like literally. I wish I wish that people could do like an X ray, and I'm not doing this podcast for that. I, I, those things, those times made us, but I feel like sometimes people see, like all this, you know, like, and and it's not to like this has nothing to do with us. This has to be with somebody else that like somebody else wants to maybe open a company. Somebody else wants to do that leap, like, or somebody wants to. They're in a position right now that they're that they're working in, and they've been in that position for a long time. And they want to like change industries and like. Like they can do it, you know, like you and, can. It's it's hard. It's hard because you really have to find that balance between passion, which again, I'm not saying I don't have passion. I have I have a lot no, of passion lot for of what passion. I do. You have to but I'm saying passion. expressing your emotion and your passion and understanding the numbers. Okay. And you can have a ton of you can have a ton of passion and be super passionate about doing something and be amazing at it. But if financially it doesn't make sense, you don't have a business. Businesses are meant to be profitable. It's all based on money. So, so you can you can. We talked about the hold on. We talked about it in 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 the in this in the episode before with Isabella, and Isabella talked and I talk about Isabella and, and I'd say that there's some people, and we talked about this even from the first episode. There's some people that love to do something. They love to do something and they're not good at it. And then there's some people that are good at things and they don't love to do it. You need to be able to be good at something, love to do it, and make money doing it. And I think that it's such a it's it's like such a massive blessing to be honest with you for me. Cause I, I always say that if you opened an accounting company, I don't know if I would be able to endure those lonely long days. I can, because I love this. There's nothing I love more than building and exceeding con like clients' expectations and like being in that that scenario, they're like, "Wow, Flago, you're doing an incredible job!" Like that's what I feel because I'm in my zone. But I, but you are not. You like you know you were like a graph that graph to the construction industry, and I think that I want to really ask you like what what motivates you though. Well, so what we'll, we'll talk about what motivates me, but. But yeah, I, you know, I came into construction. But again, like we talked about, I didn't think about the construction about aspect. Money. No, no, I didn't only think about money. I was thinking development. I was thinking real estate world. 
I was thinking. We haven't done any you, of that yet. No, I know we haven't. We will. We will we're going. We're on. We're we're it's we're, a, we're on process. the way to get there. But think about it. I had to learn to build. I'm not like somebody so, else who wanted to develop and I said, hey, I'm going to find the money. I'm so going to find the GC and find the opportunity. I know, no. I know. Like now I know how to build. Like the GC now cannot. Hustle me. Hustle us. I know, I know. But I think you it's know? so, yeah. But I think it's so crazy because, again, me and Ron were talking about this today, that sometimes people, they're so nearsighted. It's September 2016. You're an accountant at an accounting firm. No construction experience. But you didn't really, honestly, you didn't, I don't think you really cared the jobs that we we're doing. As long as we were making money and it it was going it was going to lead to this conversation. Like, I felt like sometimes people, they, they get so, like, focused on, like, how much money they're making or how many people are watching them and how many views they get and, like, how much recognition they're getting from their family and their friends. And, like, they get lost in that shit, bro. Like, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't think they're... You can correct me if I'm wrong. I personally, as cr as hard as those times were, I don't think I I don't think I have ever really lost focus of our our goal, which we haven't hit yet. I agree completely. But imagine you went into this, and I don't want to go off the topic of what motivates me. But you went into this, you went into this knowing what we were gonna build. I went into this thinking, we need to find money and and what real estate what development are we getting ourselves into i was in a in a way almost in a social media you know uh um mindset like yeah. you know hey what are we gonna develop like that was my mindset not knowing how to build anything my my mindset was what loan are we gonna get what financing are we going to get? How are we going to build this? And what development are we going to do? Well, listen, I, I never know. thought we were going to go through a grind with all these clients. Well, listen, I like don't know that. why you joined, but I'm very glad you did. Because, like I said at the beginning, and I don't, uh, obviously I don't say it enough, but I, I would not be here if it wasn't for you. And if there's any days that I've ever felt lonely, it's because I haven't talked to you. So I think that it's really important that... We really try to stick together because the, the, like eight years ago, we were like, like, we were taking, like, we we're flipping houses essentially, like, for other people. And I, but like, the goal is still the same. Like, we're, we're young, we're motivated. I feel like we really have a lot to offer in this community. And we, we want to offer so much. That's why we started this podcast. I agree. You know, because we didn't we didn't start this podcast because like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to. I don't. I, bro, I don't care. I care about money. I care about my wife, my kids. I care about you, Jazz. I care about my people. You know, like I don't care about that. Like, but I feel like this city needs really to know. You know, like, and I feel that we have so much together. You know, and I feel like our team. And we're gonna talk later about, um, you know about who we really are as a team. But would you say that your greatest strength is being really able to understand money, financials, and making sure that the business is profitable? Do you think that's your greatest strength? Um, greatest strength. I think what I do, I think what I do is not the hardest thing in the world. I, like you may. What is it that you do? You know, like managing people and making sure the finances are in on point, making sure we're you know operating at a profit, uh, um, and really you know digging into those financials and and counting pennies and and just being efficient financially and questioning where dollars are going. You know, that's my main job, making sure that we are not wasting money and that monies are being spent wisely and that we have the adequate cash flow to support our jobs okay mm. however i don't think that what i do is that difficult just me you know there are other people and you several think there are a lot of people it, mm. no there are just a lot of financial professionals that can do what i do mm. i think the biggest value that i bring to answer your question is, I, didn't, I didn't ask that question but what is the what is the biggest value? what was your exact question 
I said, what's your greatest strength? My greatest strength. Okay. So my greatest strength is... Oh, I want to talk okay. about value. What so do you my, feel greatest is strength, value? my greatest strength is my greatest value. I think my greatest strength and what I bring to our success is my consistency and the fact that, again, that I'm leading by example and I'm waking up and every day I am doing what needs to be done and people are listening and I'm leading, I'm leading people... Um, towards a common goal, which is towards our success and our profitability. Hmm. I don't think that my ability to read a financial or my understanding of tax, I don't think that's my greatest strength. I think that those are attributes that I bring to the party. But if I had that and I wasn't the person, the consistent person that I am every day and like really passionate and leading and wanting to succeed, I don't, I think that those things would be irrelevant. Like we could know everything that we know, but if, if we're not consistent and we're not showing up every day and leading people towards that common goal, I don't think, you know, I think that's my strongest asset. And I think that's where I bring a lot of value. I never thought about it like that, to be honest. You know? Because I, I always think about you and the other thing, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a weakness of mine that I, I see you sometimes only in that financial capacity and not in what you bring. Because at the end of the day, like, Almost everybody here has left. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody here is, like, other than Idam, and, like, there's very few people, like, the environment that we are in and that we have here is, we're trying to, we're, honestly, we're trying to do three generations worth of things in one generation. So it's, it's not, it's definitely not for everybody. And it really, like, we, like, are trying to, like, breed warriors. It's, but... What do you think is what do you would what do you think is your greatest weakness though? My greatest weakness. And and my greatest weakness okay, go. is myself. My greatest weakness is that I overthink things sometimes. And I get I want I think that there's a reason for everything. Like a number. Yeah. You know, I'm so financial driven. I'm so financial driven that Literally, I think there's a reason for everything. Like the way math makes sense. You know, my math is very, my, my math, my, my mind is very, you know, structured and very mathematically driven. And when I see numbers, you know, I just quickly pick up on things and they make sense to me. So I really, you know, my brain works one way. You know, I see things that happen in life and I'm like, why, why, why? And then sometimes you ask yourself so many whys. You really start to think and you're questioning yourself, your, yourself and your ability and everything and everything. And you're, you're just stuck in wise and, and you don't enjoy and appreciate the moments, you know. Yeah. So, I, you know, that's I think that's my greatest weakness, you know, uh, my just my my questioning of the why and the why and thinking that there has to be an answer and a reason for everything. Before you're talking about uh, leadership, which I think that, you know, I'm, like. You, you, like like it if you don't like like if you if you want or not or it doesn't really make a difference we have to be leaders it doesn't matter if you're an incredible accountant it doesn't matter if you're an incredible builder at the end of the day in the position that we have placed ourselves and god has placed ourselves we have to be leaders we have to lead people do you do you think that you're do you think that you are a good leader and what do you think that you can make what do you think you can be how do you think you could be a better leader how do I think I could be a better leader? I think I could be a better leader by allowing my team members to fail on their own. Yeah. You know, um, I think I could be a better leader by letting them fail on their own and not micromanaging. Uh, I don't want anything to slip through the cracks. I don't. But why is that? Because I, 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 I know because I, I I'm the same person. I expect perfection. You know, out of myself, yeah, you know, so I don't want. But do you think any that perfection has to do with what I was saying like a couple seconds ago is we are trying to do three generations worth of things in one generation. Of course. Like, yeah. Like we. Uh, yeah. I, I we honestly, don't want to see John honestly, Bell succeed in my in like in somebody else's hands. I don't think I promise you, I don't I don't I don't think that I don't want to see. I think about the fact that right right literally right now. What I'm doing, hold on. I need to excel. I, hold like on. If my if life, I, right no, now, no, no, I, I think w w what God has planned for us and the outcome will work itself out. But hold on, if I tell you right now that life, 100, it's a known. It's in the Bible. Let's say it's in the Bible that 
in 50 years, life is going to end. Life is going to end. Like In 50 years, I said life completely, completely, completely ends. There's no more life after 50 years. Do you think you'll still be like that, though? Oh, I know I'm going to die one day. I know I'm going to die so one day. So what's the urgency, because, though? Because, oh, my God. Because that's if not my urgency. Think, my urgency we, is not that. My urgency is that I don't want John Bell to succeed when I'm dead. Oh, but, but we're always going to have another step. I there's, know, but I want to do as much as I can be, while I'm alive. And that's my I'm, motivation. I'm with you. And that's the, where the anxiety comes in. You know, hey, we wake up and we're like, oh, my God, we got to do something. We got to push. We got to push. We got to push. We got to push. But I, I don't think about that. I think literally, man, I have my notebook and I have my I have the task and I have the most immediate tasks. And those tasks have to get handled. Which one are those? Honestly, the ones that are either the most important to the client or the most financially driven tasks, you know, and and there are so many things that I can get to that. We've just built a structure where we have team members under us that are handling things that we don't have enough time to get to. And uh, I don't know. I just I, I feel like I don't I don't I worry about the task at hand. And, and I do you think I, I worry about the task at hand. I think you are worried about the task at hand, but I think you have an ultimate mission which I think is great. I don't have an ultimate mission. You have an ultimate mission that you haven't even measured, that you don't even know. You're just pushing the table hmm. until you, you don't even know until when, you know? Me, again, I'm more calculated. I don't have an ultimate mission. I'm just kind of focused, pushing. Hey, one new employee. Hey, we need this. Hey, new employee. Hey, we need that new employee, you know? new people to build a team around and help us get to where we're trying to get to, you know? It's, so it, what do you think your end goal is? My end goal, my end goal is to eventually retire, you know, hopefully, oh shit. hopefully my kids, hopefully my <laughs> kids are, you know, I don't want to retire at 70 years old, you, you know, I want to work, but I want to be like just developing our projects. Like I don't see myself being 70 years old and, and like, and walking, and, and walking the job and like and like walking with a client and responding to client phone calls like I think at 70 60 50 maybe hopefully you know 45 you know <laughs> I'm hoping that as early as possible we're just kind of doing it, bro, our like own. this is like this is this is it bro like this is your platform to talk bro no no I'm serious like, like I, I think early I think the earliest that we can you know just do our own thing um I think would 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 really relieve us of a lot of stress because a, a big stress that we have is, you know, pleasing the client, making sure we meet the client's expectations, you know, and, and, and aside from giving them that, that service, we're also consulting them. When we do it for ourselves, it's going to be quicker. It's going to be more profitable. You know, we're not going to be as stressful. Like it, it's just, I hope that by that age, we're kind of just doing our own thing. And I kind of just have my, house my family's taken care of can i be honest with you though you know can i be honest with you i share the same goal i really do i i i, I today at the um at the barber shop i was telling some i was telling the, my barber i said you know m my goal is that i i you know we start you know doing our own development and when i said it and when you were saying it Today I walked with an architect and we were walking the end of the job. And his his feeling, his reaction, his feedback. I don't know if I can I don't know if I can I don't know if I can live without that. Like I I really 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 I feel it. Like I, it's not even like I want it. I feel it. Like it is the reason that I work so hard is because that architect has been in the industry for a long time. And I want for this experience, and that job, and that punch I walk through to be the best ever. And I, I take a lot of pride in that. And I, and, my, and I, listen, I'm with you. Me and you have a lot of properties together. A lot of them are already in permitting. And we will develop together. But I don't know if I'm personally ready to lose the client because I don't know how else I can satisfy that itch that I have to prove people. Maybe that maybe that person that I'm proving is you, that you maybe have to be self-aware that that I that I, I need to prove somebody wrong. Like that's what motivates me. Maybe I don't know. Like maybe you tell me there's no way we can do that job, you know, subconsciously and so that I do it. But 
I just want you to know that whatever we do, I don't care. I swear, I don't care about money. I don't care about it. We will make it. We will lose it. Money to me means nothing. I, 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 I love what we can do with money. And the person that says that money doesn't buy happiness is because they never have money. But I also, at the same time, I'm okay if God takes it all away. I, I, that's not what motivates me. I, I, I'm with you. And I'm okay with God taking it away. If God, that's what God wants. No, no, no. But let him about God. But it. I'm just telling you that I want you to know that you don't, that you don't, what what I love and what really sets me apart as a person is my ability to exceed expectations and to build. And if we're only doing it for myself, then like who am I trying? Like who who am I pleasing? Who am I serving? That's all I want to say. That that whatever we do as a, if you really want the best out of me, you you have to know that I need to serve someone. And and I and I need to exceed someone's expectation. That's all I want to say about that. Because then I'm gonna start crying. Before we start developing on our own and become the biggest developer in Miami, <laughs> where do you think that? Where do you think that you want? Um, where do you think you want John Bell to go? Um, well, now that I know that we have to serve clients for the rest of our <laughs> lives. Um, Thank you. I wanna. That's what we've been. Listen. That's what we. That's what we're called to do. I, I know it's crazy, but Jesus Christ that lived, that had no sin, had to come out from heaven and die for me and you for something he didn't want to do, but he had to do it. So I just want you to realize that sometimes this city really needs, and I know you know that, just, I'm preaching to the choir here, but there's a lot of people that like, they just... They need good GCs. Like, they need us. Like, and I'm, and and, I'm, and we, and I'm, good, and we, I'm good for serving, man. I'm good for serving. I just want you to know that it, we we can also have our own development, but we can also have the right clients that say, hey, I appreciate you. I know your value. I need I need you, and I want you to build this for me. And, and I and I hope that that, I swear to God, I hope that I'm, that never changes. I'm And I'm good for serving, and I'm good. If I know we, you are. I'm good if we go that route and we're building for clients. You know, I'm good with it. I just want you to understand. Listen, I understand there's I some bad want, clients out there. No, 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 it's not even about that. I just want you to understand, and which you know, again, preaching to the choir, same like I know, hey, it's good to serve. But a financial platform allows you to serve. If you were trying to figure out how to pay your rent and our company was struggling financially, You'd be focusing on the company surviving, not serving. Our financial freedom allows you to be more creative and serve more creatively, you know? So I'm with you. We're going to serve forever. And I agree with you. Maybe on a job, maybe a client. Maybe somebody we else. We serve in other ways that aren't client you're related. Yeah, nobody our has any platform, idea. our financial freedom, our platform has allowed us to serve. Maybe that's a great way. In, in, I, in the first episode, I talk about like our foundation, like, there is nothing that I love more than serving people. So if, if we don't serve a single client, I, I just pray that me and you, because me and you are going to be together forever until we die, is that we continue to serve. And maybe we serve through the John Bell Foundation, which is the mission is to serve people through the, the gifts that God has given us. What advice would you give to somebody eight years ago like you, you were working for an accounting company. I was working for a construction company. We had no work. We had no name for the company. We had nothing. But those people say, hey, you know what? I want to start a business. This is what I feel like I should do. What advice do you think we should give them? I would tell them, jump. <laughs> Make sure you have a parachute on. Um, just jump. And, uh, so just do and, it. And just do it. Just go. Hey, if you, if you fail, you fail, you fail. You fail, you fail. Just go. And let, you know, God or let your destiny um, reveal itself to you, you know. We learned as we went, you know. Nobody wrote our path for us. You know, my biggest, I realized after is my biggest fear was, you know, not knowing what to do. Um that fear is what got us to yeah. to where we are, you know. Uh, you will learn on the way. If not, you fail. And there's no problem with failing. 
There's no problem with failing. You go, you go, you only eat. learning. You learn or you go back to doing what you were doing before. Just jump, go ahead, just do it. Now, everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Everybody can't own their own business. Tomorrow, everybody's going to quit their jobs and just start doing everything. No, you know, like everybody can be an entrepreneur. We need employees and, pe and, and people working are very important. We would never be where we are without our people, without our, our company, without our, our employees, you know. Um, you know, so, so everybody can be an entrepreneur. You know, you, you, you need the warriors. You know, you need the people that are going to invade first. You know, like, you know, everybody can be a president, <laughs> you know. Well, listen, I love you like crazy. I love you too, bro. And I, and I don't say it enough. And um, I appreciate everything that you've done for me. I appreciate everything that you've given me as a, as a platform to succeed. I think that what me and you have, I don't think that many people in this city, let it know, like the world, have what me and you have. I think that we don't have a lot of opportunity in terms of where we come from. I think we've made an incredible amount of opportunity from where we are. And I think that, and I hope that, not only to this podcast, this podcast, you know, it's important, but it's, it's not, it's nowhere near important as what we're doing like on a daily basis, that people will realize that this is a group of guys and girls that really love to serve. Like, if you talk about, like, the person that answers the, per the phone on the first, you know, that answers the phone to the person that answers the first email, like, we, we have a company full of, like, servants, you know? And I think that that's what companies sometimes lack. And I, I'm really happy where we're at. And I think that I never would have ever imagined that eight years ago we would be sitting here. Because eight years ago we were sitting in a, in a truck with me with a wad of cash, you know, and me paying people. And then at the end of that, I only had like a hundred bucks <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's been crazy. And I hope that through this podcast, people really understand like the grind that I have gone through that my wife Isabella has gone through, but, but that you have gone through that Camila, your girlfriend has gone through the jazz that I did his wife has gone through like, so many people have like shed blood for the success of this company. So that's the end of episode three. Um, Jazz Maching, our business partner, is coming up uh, on episode four. And our episode five is our first employee. And then we're going to have a lot of guests coming in. We're really, really happy and thankful, honestly, for you guys. A lot of people have been watching the videos and then been texting and calling and like it's such an incredible like i don't even know it's like it's like it's crazy but we love you guys we have a big heart for the city and that's why we started this this podcast is because what we have in this company i don't think anybody has it we have a massive heart we want to serve and we're incredible builders and we would love to serve you so uh, stay tuned, and uh, the rest of the episodes are crazy. We've already filmed like 20 episodes, and I'll tell you that um, they're amazing. And I think that the people's stories that have sat in the seat that Foz is sitting in have uh, have really played a role in our life and have really showed um, us and the viewer, you know, who we are, uh, what we do, and the things we care about.